Alrighty, so we're in, in, now we're back for our next episode of um, my history in sketching. And these things were all inspired by third edition. I'm now moving in, again, we're in 2003, I think it was, when I started sketching again. So here we have a double-headed weapon, which is kind of got a, almost a spade-like design, so it's kind of a, uh, inspired by the monk spade and, or, or even so, uh, um, some funky battle axe, possibly. Um, I very much thought this was uh, a, a dwarven weapon. In fact, yeah, actually, it's uh, it's 11 8 2002. So we are into the, uh, the year uh, in 2002 in this particular sketch. Um, then we have kind of a curvy uh, Yataga um, sword. Then we have some another a blunt double weapon, a double mace. We have a double weapon inspired by the Urgosh, which was a trident one in a point on this one and another double weapon which was a um, was actually a hollow mace designed so that when you swung it it whistled so this was designed as a as to scare people psychological warfare kind of thing and had a spike on this end now you see also here what i call hand blades now i had an entire category of i have an entire category of items which are hand blades and hand blades are one-handed items often held like this the the, the so they're cutting the blade is here so you're cutting it in a slashing or you're stabbing obviously inspired by katars but i kind of took it into some new direction so you had some large blades here here's a, a version of the guitar and here you have now these two here are not that far diverged from real world devices these two are definitely fantasy um then we get into things for example this is based off something called a tiger shield so it's a shield, you strap to your forearm, you hold it here, but it's designed both as blocking and you drive it forward to hit someone. So it's flat on this side and curved this way and it has a, has a sharpened edge, but it's, it's designed to cover the entire forearm. So it's a weapon and a device, a defensive device at the same time. And again, 11-2, so this is I'm November of 2002. Then we have a three-pointed throwing dagger. And this was inspired by uh, throwing stars, we're trying to take throwing stars into a larger category, making them more dangerous as a weapon as opposed to a distracting device or as opposed to just a, a means of delivering poison. This was to making throwing hand, a throwing blade that's designed, a hand blade that's designed to be a very effective damaging weapon. So when you held it in your hand like this, the points would be here and they would not be touching your arm. Your arm would go here when you're holding it. And once you launch it, of course, it's bound to hit something because the entire thing is sharp. I, if I were to draw this again, there would be lines in here that demarked things a little more clearly. But again, I still hadn't owned the page yet. Because you notice here, I've got some very vague texturing in these. There's a little sign of cross hatching here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's not wood grain. I'm still not owning it. I call this a dwarven short sword. And here we have kind of a fantasy sword over the top. It's got a hook and uh, a point kind of taken from a martial arts style uh, of, uh, what was it called? What's the, shoot, what's the hook, hook weapon called in, Mar in Chinese, the Chinese martial arts? I don't remember. But here we have another uh, forearm weapon. Your arm um, comes in here, you grip it here, and there'll be a strap underneath it. Or oh, actually, this has a collar. So this is, it actually has a, a collar. So you put your entire arm in, and then it hugs the forearm, like this, and it hugs the forearm in here, and you're holding here, and makes your entire arm into a slashing and piercing weapon. Um, it, would be, it would be definitely something to get used to, but I think it could be effective. I would actually like to see that made in real life. I think that would be kind of cool. Um, here we have a piercing sword, but this had like four blades. So they're, they're, they're actually designed to be this kind of like set up like this, though they're not of the same size. Two are a little thinner than the others. Um, and this is just a broad spearhead. Here we have a chain knife, actually science fiction design with a power. It hit. It would actually a chainsaw blade that will work when you're using it. Um, here we have kind of a very silly toothed axe. And again, I was still trying to find my feet on this. I, I didn't know, quite know what I was doing. Here we have a um, an energy weapon, which I illustrated for something. And this actually had built in solar panels so that when you're not using it you could lay it out and it would help to recharge itself or at least top off um and here we have uh a similar version to this this would be like a kind of a modular system 
that, that you, this this thing folds in, the whole thing could then be co collapse. You couldn't use it this way, but for storage and things like that. Kind of making an idea of an assassin's weapon. And now we get into like, for example, this is a, a chopping sword, kind of a sword axe fusion here. So this is all sharpened here, but mainly it's used for chopping. And this is a chopping axe as well. And here we kind of get into some, so a silly version of a, uh, of a, now I'm spacing what it's called. What type of sword it is. It's it's, it's European. Falcata, no, not Falcata. Falchon. That's what it is, a Falchon. And here we have a very basic shield a design I came up with. Uh, a big target, a, a big square tower shield. Here we have a dwarven axe. And again, there's no texturing in here. It's narrower than it is thick, but it's still very, very large and absurdly heavy. Um, here we go. Uh, here we get into some stuff that I'm. I think I'm starting to get a get control of the page now. I'm really starting to see some of the things I want. This is an elven hand axe, and I start to really develop my version of what elven weapons were, which are lots of curves and 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 things. There were very few angles on elven, and this whole area is not sharp. Well, this whole edge is sharp. This is not sharp. It's just all from one piece. This is designed, this, this is just shaded that way intentionally to give you some contrast. It was designed for aesthetics and for use. Here we have, this is just, this is inspired by an actual toy that I have in my collection. Um, I wanted to make my own version of it. So it's a really large heavy mace with five points, four going around here and the one there and the design is just pure bludgeoning slash piercing. Here we have a hand axe that actually has four blades, and I think I was inspired by something I saw in science fiction. Here we have an early pole arm. There's no shaft here, but I kind of like this, the whole elven glaive vibe going on here. Here we had a dwarven axe, um, bail over the top axe, and a hammer on the back. And again, there's very little definition here. I still haven't truly found myself. Here we have a fantasy martial art weapon. So you what you carried here, this entire edge here is uh, dull. So when you hold it here, this runs around the outside of your forearm. This is inspired by a tonfa. And then we have two points all sharp in here. So you could use it as a blocking device and as in a thrusting slashing device. Um, alrighty. Now we get into some things like this is a kind of a science fiction-y this fantasy design, almost science fantasy. And again, this is November um, 2002. I came back strong, apparently. I was doing a lot of, I just the idea that I could sketch again was really flooding into my head. Here we have um, a fancy knife. Here we have a push dagger. Here we have a really weird geometric design. And I'm just experimenting with this one. Here we have a vaguely realistic Native American style tomahawk. Here we have a decent, actually short cutlass, kind of almost like a dwarven or maybe a halfling design. Um, and here we have a wooden club. Again, no texture, one-handed wooden club designed to be uh, for in point, it, this point with the impact when you swing it. Um, and I think I'm starting to get some feel here. I'm really starting to uh, find my place, I think, in some of these drawings. Here we have this was designed as a ship, I believe, of some variety. I can't remember for what. It was like somebody needed an illustration and I came up with this small like drone. So it's got these sensors or windows and two little gun ports. This is how it landed, I don't know why. Here we have an elven cutlass. And again, I began to really feel myself here. This is what I wanted. I wanted this kind of vibe for elven weapons. Um, and here we have, these are inspired by, this is inspired by Star Trek. And it's, a, it's again, it's a battle staff. This is also inspired by, by Star Trek, um, and this is um, a, um, kind of a military fork with a little tiny counterpart on the other end, maybe a double fork. Here we have kind of a, a lame act, tomahawk slash hammer, which is vaguely taken from a real world design. Um, and But I've started to put some wraps in here. It's starting to look like a more of a shaft. And here we have a, a Japanese style weapon based off of a Yari. So it's got just kind of a, a Japanese style version of a trident points in here all coming together. And that, at least to me, looks somewhat realistic. So I was quite happy with that illustration. Mm -hmm.